Good morning, I'm back in uh, Jacob Smith's Park, a Garden of Eden for dog walkers and an important piece of common land right in the middle of Knaresborough in Yorkshire. And uh, Effie and I are taking an early constitutional 6.30 or so on this Wednesday morning. And I've been thinking further about the link between Whitsuntide, the season we're in, and the importance of uh, of common land, of access to the land. My parents-in-law who live here have um, recently with a, a cooperative of other local residents, community association, purchased some important fields between here and Harrogate. And uh, that's for the uh, their environmental value so that they can be used as community growing fields, potentially a natural burial ground, and against the uh, somewhat rapacious uh, expansion of, of, of housing. Um, and therein, of course, is the tension that we face in many, many places between the, the desperate, urgent need for, for housing and the need to preserve uh, the natural environment. Here's that lovely stag's head tree that I was telling you about yesterday. You get a good view of it there this morning. And um, in Whitsuntide, there's a kind of democratization of blessing upon the land. It's a, a sort of spiritual commons takes place where the promises of God's blessing on all people, all flesh, as the Bible puts it, and the possibility of every territory, every every tribe, every person, every group uh, experiencing the the justice and the liberty and the peace of God through the pouring out the the, the outpouring of the Spirit into every every tongue and every every place, young and old, rich and poor. Uh, no one is exempted and uh, no particular race is privileged, no particular place is privileged. But that doesn't mean that there aren't holy places, as I've explained before. The point of, one of the points at least, of, uh, of Pentecost is that henceforth all places become hallowed ground, uh, filled with the potential of, of seeing uh, of, of hearing God's message and of seeing the kingdom come uh, in in practical ways, in earthly ways, as well as what we sometimes often call spiritual ways. And there's no real divide between the two, of course, one leads to the other. And I see in this um, wonderful flurry of hawthorn blossom around the landscape, a lovely sign of that, the... Uh, the commoner garden hawthorn is able to protest this season. Now we too are blessed. <laughs> it's not only <laughs> it's not only the posh plants. It's not only the uh, usually outstanding ones, but these bushes too that we usually pass by that merge into the landscape, and that nobody would previously give a a second glance to. Dazzle us and we're made to consider, yes, <laughs> they have their own particular beauty. And it's like a sort of popular revolt of the hedgerow uh, this year with all of the, there's some, with all of the, uh, all of the hawthorn just declaring, placarding its own particular blessing. And uh, so the issues of, of, of common land are uh, much in mind and appropriately so uh, land use is one of the most contentious issues of our time and so much land, certainly in Britain, is held by so few. Access to it has always been uh, a sign of our ethical, our, our political uh, stance, our, our beliefs and um, of course common land like this was uh, during the, from the 16th century onwards to the end of the 19th century, really, um, 
enclosed at an uh, enormous rate so that private landowners could uh, f use it for, for uh, wool production principally and it was fenced off and uh, inaccessible to everyday people. The enclosures were one of the most profound changes to affect the, the landscape in Britain, as many of you know. And sadly, very often the church sided with, with the landowners as they, they were often so landed themselves. Churches were often placed on uh, manorial estates, owed their patronage to local landowners. And so we didn't cover ourselves in glory during the enclosures period in terms of radical uh, siding with the poor. And there are still challenges for how we determine access to land, common ownership of land, uh, to not least to uh, build our resilience against the, uh, the crisis uh, in the climate and, um, and the need for the recovery of the land. And that has to be protected. Local groups, of course, do have to play their part. Um, it's true about the health of our rivers as well and how so many of them, particularly um, with the chalk streams, which are so valuable. 80% of the world's chalk streams are in southern England and in Wiltshire. We see many of them on going to ground, or one or two of them, at least the Kennet particularly, the Avon. So there are all kinds of issues about the, the health of our land, what it's used for, who owns it, who has access to it, and which parts are blessed, as, uh, as I'd put it, that uh, make Pentecost an important political and social challenge, as well as a, a, a sign of spiritual renewal. So whatever land you have access to, it's worth us thinking, I'm going to think when I get back, what are the issues to do with land use and the quality uh, of it, uh, the invasion of it, the pollution of it, that I have an opportunity, perhaps a duty, to be a bit more mobilized by the Whitsuntide blessing. God bless you, friends, as you go to ground.